Let's bring in the Assistant Trade Minister now, Tim Ayres. Tim, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So, uh, finally, wine is back. Uh, China's seen the light. Well, it's been the product of uh, two years of really hard and determined work by the Trade Minister, the Foreign Minister, the Prime Minister, the whole government focused on removing these impediments to Australian trade. Um, it is a very welcome development and it, covers, it comes on the back of, of the $20 billion worth of impediments to Australian exporters, uh, $18 billion of that removed. Wine was the biggest final part uh, yeah. of that piece and it's it's a very good development to see that Yeah, improve. so Richard, who we just spoke to a short time ago from Beccardi Wines, he says they've already got a backlog of orders that are ready to go. How long do you, <clears throat> do you expect or predict that we will get things to a level where they were when these tariffs were, were put on? Well, as you pointed out in the intro to this story, about $1.2 billion at its peak, Australian wine exports, yeah. uh, that, that, that represents jobs in Western Australia, South Australia, the Hunter Valley. Yeah. Uh, it's a very significant employer and place for business investment, uh, vineyards that are utterly dedicated to the China wine market. We expect all of these uh, uh, impediments to be removed by the end of the month, that is, in a couple of days. But, of course, it's going to depend on the commercial arrangements that exporters have. Some already have, uh, as your previous I'm interviewee demonstrated, they are ready to so go. So they have those. From scratch, it'll take longer. Uh, entry into a market like China takes time. Yeah. And we are working to support this sector uh, as well, uh, mm. meetings with officials and the sector to make sure that everywhere there's a barrier that we can assist to uh, resolve, we're, we're doing that. It, it, is, it is very welcome news. Yep. Uh, so to get to that $1.2 billion level again, are we talking years? Well, it's going to take, it's going to take some time. There is, I, I travelled to China uh, last year uh, to meet with uh, my counterpart, the Chinese yep. uh, Vice Minister. Um, I can tell you there is an enormous appetite for high-quality Australian wine in the Chinese market. Uh, Chinese business people who I met with absolutely understood the value uh, of Australian wine. So I'm expecting to see a rapid take-up where there are existing markets. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm optimistic about how that's going to proceed, but it's going to depend on uh, all of these commercial realities. OK, what about the other side of the deal? Barnaby Joyce just referred to the swindle towers, um, wind towers, he elaborated on. Yeah. What, 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 what did we have to give up? for China to, to come back to us on wine. It's, it's hard to fathom a bloke like Barnaby Joyce, really. Who, but he's right, who's, there's, there's a deal, right? It's, it's a two-way street. unable to uh, accept that a government would behave with honour in the Australian national interest without being blowhards on the domestic scene uh, and would just work through this in a programmatic, sensible kind of way to achieve the outcome. There is no connection between these... Uh, between these developments. So we didn't have to give up anything? Well, uh, or, we, give, we, or, or allow we, more business to we, come from China? We absolutely did not. We have proceeded on the basis that our job here is to remove the impediments that exist in front of Australian exporters because that's in the Australian national interest. Right. Uh, Barnaby so Joyce says some. Sending more wind towers to Australia at a Barn cheaper price. Barnaby Joyce says some wild things. Um, he's hostile to wind energy. At, at all. Um, he's, he's for nuclear energy uh, up there in the New England where I come from. Uh, and uh, he has absolutely no evidence uh, for that kind of proposition. Uh, he is just making it up because that's all that the coalition uh, have got is negativity, uh, uh, conspiracy theories, fear campaigns. Um, like We just should stick to the facts. OK, so just on this announcement yesterday, uh, um Pivoting to solar, a, a big one by the Prime Minister. I mean, it's going to take us a long time to, to play catch-up when it comes to solar, right? I mean, this kind of thing probably needed to be done 10 years ago. It, it, it certainly uh, would have been better if it had been done 10 years ago. Remember, Australia invented solar technology. We have the highest take-up of rooftop solar in the world. We invented solar at the University of New South Wales. China. Now that has all been commercialised offshore, 90% made in one jurisdiction in China. Uh, this, the, what this development means is that a brand new solar technology that uses copper instead of silver, uh, it's the next wave of innovation, will be manufactured in Australia instead of offshore. Mm. There's a billion dollars worth of support and that means that Lake Liddell at that power station that I know well, I used to, uh, used to travel there very regularly as a young trade union official, uh, and it, this, this facility that will be built there will employ more people at Lake Liddell uh, than, a, that, than have been there in living memory. 
Okay. Um, this is a very good development for the hunter. It's good permanent manufacturing jobs, okay. and that's what you're going to see from the just government a, this year.